Yes, so where should we start? Um, you're an accumulator, alchemist, ruler. Um, would you like to explain just a little bit about that? There's quite a lot of accumulators in our group. Oh, yes. And alchemists, too. An alchemist, too. Oh, I love alchemists. <laughs> <laughs> so, my accumulator is very high at 37. Yeah, at, at 37, and an alchemist at 31, and ruler at 30. Yeah. Um, and then Maverick. <laughs> um, so, how it plays out is that I love money. I love playing games with money. I love saving money. Um, but I don't like investing money. That feels really icky and dangerous to me. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> you need to listen to me more. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, and the alchemist um, thankfully helps me relax a little bit around money because I can manifest money. I can manifest clients. I have my own business as well. And um, it does make it a little bit easier and less stressful but then my ruler comes in and goes like you gotta work 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 and really um insistent and diligent um and focused and determined so uh, as a combination it's quite intense sometimes but i'm learning from celine who's a romantic i'm learning to ease off a bit of, a little bit <laughs> i remember during the whole uh, quarantine period that um you said you were going to take a break because you had to take care of your two girls. And then the whole time during that break, I kept receiving messages on Messenger that you were had a new idea and you were going to do this and that and oh, I need to do this. And then you, yeah, you kept on working even though the days you were going to take a break. And I was yeah. like, this head wow. never stops. It's like your ruler wants to work and then your alchemist keeps giving you new ideas. That's it. This is it. The two together can be like, whoa. And I can't resist it. It just sounds really good every time. But I, I do, I am learning to like, okay, well, it's a good idea. Let's park it for a few days. And usually after a few days, it's like, no, it's okay. I don't want to do that. So I'm learning. I'm still learning. We're all learning. Once you learn the archetypes, it's like you get insights every day, every few days, every, yeah, every few days, really, I think, especially yeah. in the yeah. beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. And especially if we talk about it, like every time, um, every time I feel like I'm sabotaging myself somewhere, I know that I can say like, oh, but that's probably my uh, maverick um, or my uh, romantic playing up. And then I feel like, ah, but it, it's a fun game to see where they play up. And I don't know how you feel it, but when um, I think mindset work is sometimes like feels a bit heavy because I know that oh I have to go through this again and look at my sabotages and go back to those feelings those icky feelings that you really don't want to feel but you have to feel to process them but I think with the archetypes it just um, makes it a bit of a game it's like ah oh, that's where my maverick was playing with me oh yeah. let me put in my romantic because I need to enjoy life and just it helps to put one uh, gift uh, yeah it makes it easier to pin yeah it makes it easier to pinpoint what's happening yeah it's not just you as a person being like this no it's like this particular trait coming up and that you can solve or ease with other archetypes you can bring them up as as you wish when yeah. you know them <laughs> definitely so what kind of business do you have uh, i know you but the ones yeah yeah here don't um, have it so maybe you should explain <laughs> just a little bit so I'm a mixture of uh, quite a few things and I've put them all together, combine them um, and call myself a book doula. So I'm an editor, proofreader, hypnotherapist, Reiki practitioner, NLP practitioner, EFT practitioner, and I've combined it all to help other women uh, write their books. So I support them emotionally and editorially as they birth their books. And they tend to be books that are emotional to write because it tends to be their stories, their memoirs and um, mixed with personal development, you know, mixed with um, helping other people within their books. And yeah, all the wounds we surface and all the stuff that we um, um, not suffer from, but struggle with, you come back when you try to write your book, whatever you write, but in particular, if it's your memoir or your personal development yeah. book. You have even almost convinced me to write a book. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yeah it won't be for immediately but you know uh, after uh, after getting so close with you and keep here on writing books and why you need to put your mission out there then you know it might happen 
someday. Yes. This is it. This is it. I want yep. to help heal the world and I, and I help other women write their books so that they can heal the world so that together we can heal the world. Yep. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So what changes, did you make any changes in your business after you learned about the, the sacred money archetypes? Yes. Um, I joined the um, sacred money archetypes of course that Denise Duffield Phil Thomas had put together. I joined that specifically to know what, to do in my business because I knew that the gurus were saying X, Y, Z, but I felt like, well, I can't do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. So I need to know myself more. And I really felt that these second money architects were going to help me because it's not just about money. The way you do money is the way you do everything. Says yeah. the creator of the, of the course, the creator being Kendall Summerhall. Um, and so when I did the course with Denise Duffield Thomas, immediately I was like, I need to learn even more. Um, but what I changed straight away was that what changed within me, it was the confidence to do what I wanted to do, which was to work mostly with one-to-one uh, -one with clients, um, which doesn't make sense on many levels. But for me, it makes sense. For my accumulator, it makes sense. For my ruler, it makes sense. For my ruler, it doesn't mean that anyone else's ruler would do the same because the ruler is there to build an empire. So if it's your number one archetype, maybe you will want to build a big empire. But it's my third, so it's like a little empire. <laughs> So yeah, well, it's, it's like you say, you match your business to, to what works for you. And I know a lot of the gurus say, oh, but you can build a business. You don't have to work hard. You, um, you like there's even books about the four hour work week. And that's all awesome if, if you're looking for that. But I realized that during the quarantine, especially like that would never be for you. You would be so bored. I think if you only <laughs> have to work for it. <laughs> Um, no, 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 I'm still looking for that. I'm still yeah. trying to do, I'm doing less and less actually. Yeah, but, but that, that would be so too much of a leap. Like I think yes. you have to grow there and just for now you really like you're at the beginning, well, not the beginning, you already have a good business, but the, the stepping up to your bigger empire, because you're, you're really in a phase now where you're growing very much. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that would not be a good idea saying like, oh, but you can only work a uh, half time and not do too much because then, yeah. I'd be bored. Maybe I'd be bored. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think don't. you can do, I don't, I don't mean to say that you won't be able to do four hour weeks, but it's your drive is so high that it's not on your priority list. Yeah, I will do other things. <laughs> yeah, probably. So I, I write books as well and I want to. I want to, for now, I mean, it's really clear, like in just in the last few days, I don't think I've even told you, it's really clear that I just want, I want to write and I want to help women write. And that's it. I don't want to be bogged down in the administration and the yeah, personal administration as well. But so there, I will still work, but in a different way. And for me, it will all be pleasure anyway, because I love, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. I think um, that the drivers, to a certain goal are so different for each archetype like you want to work less especially like you want to do less of the the things that aren't your core business and you want to write more you want to have time for that um i'm a romantic i don't want time to write my book or to work even even though i i, I like of course coaching people and inspiring people and writing about all that but my goal would be to more go more on holidays and to spend even more time just relaxing and uh, having massages, going to the sauna, uh, things like that. So it's it's a whole different kind of driver. It, we have yeah. a bit of the same goal, but it's yeah. That's why in I'm an easier way. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's why I love the sacred money archetypes is because there's not a, a thing as one size fits all. It's just everybody has their own way of looking at their life and their business and um the most coaches just aim for one specific type of person and the thing is with archetypes is that everybody can see how their business can be aligned with their archetypes with what they want and their talents and their challenges yeah so if, if for example to contrast this with what uh, how i do it if i were a celebrity you've got celebrity in your top three but if i were celebrity as my top one, I would want to be a lot more visible, a lot more um, you know, standing out more, uh, wearing really lots of, wow, I mean, I put, I, I put some makeup on for you today, but you know, normally I wouldn't, right? So, 
<laughs> but if I were a celebrity, it would show, it would really, really be very clear. And then I would want to gather a lot of people and make them stand out. And I would do my business very, very differently. So it really does show in your life and in your business. Very differently. Yeah, definitely. Um, I thought it was very interesting. Like when I just found out about the sacred money archetypes, I did the test and uh, my top two were tied but it was celebrity and romantic, but because celebrity was the first alphabetical uh, uh, name, I got as a result, you're a celebrity. And I focused on that and it just, it didn't feel really right. It's like there was something missing. Like I knew the energy had been suppressed because I got a lot of comments on that before, um, but still it didn't feel 100% right. And then I had, um, I had a reading with one of my buddies during the course and uh, she said, are you really a celebrity? I'm a celebrity and I would never show my garden on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I had just put up my, uh, a picture of my garden, like, oh, this is where I enjoy myself and this is where I relax and this is, I'm so glad that I found this new house. I'm just like, oh, totally in love with it. And she was absolutely right because then I redid the test and I know that we're not really supposed to do that because then you look at it from a different angle, but. I was really aware of that since I was learning and I didn't want to um, uh, force the result. But so I was really aware of every question, really asking, is this what I want, uh, what I want or not? And it did turn out that romantic was a little bit higher than celebrity. Not mm -hmm. much, but it was just, yeah. That. Yeah, it makes a difference because oh. it is really is a lens through which you look at everything. So I yeah. think your buddy, buddy was right, definitely. She yeah, was, no, she I'm really happy you. because as soon as what she said there, it was like, yes, that's me. And I could totally embrace it. Yes. But uh, yeah, there is sometimes a, a struggle with accepting your archetypes. And I think, um, and I've heard uh, from others as well, that celebrities are very often repressed because they're the ones that standing out and getting lots of uh, um, comments that we should just act normal and don't be too mm. visible, not don't stand out too much. To yourself. Um, did you have any experience with that, with any of your um, archetypes? So I was always like very proud of my archetypes until I did the uh, Denise's course and we, we looked at the challenges. I'm like, oh yeah, it's not that great. <laughs> so for example, Which challenge do you mean? I, I, I don't particular? Spend, yeah, for example, I don't spend money on myself much. Like unlike the romantic, I'm like, save my money save my money just in case just in case and then it stays in the bank account and then it doesn't get you well i mean it does get used and some um because of my ruler was also good with money but um i do spend money on my business i've never had any problem spending money on my business but on myself in my personal life going on holidays one of my priorities but apart from that i don't spend any money like uh, this is the same top i've been wearing for three years um, you know, I had trouble spending money on my new headphones, even though the old one was really broken. Uh, you could argue that's for my business, but it's also for, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, very kindly, Celine um, uh, did a little challenge for me. She challenged me to buy myself a money jar and to keep money specifically just for myself. And so here it is. I thought I would show you. <laughs> uh, I love your jar. With I would a similar one. It's on Amazon. Um, yep. it's still on there, so maybe you can, you can get it. And then I decided to put, we agreed <laughs> that I would put 1% of all my earnings. Every time I earn, I put 1% of my earnings yep. into this jar. And so then COVID-19 happened. I couldn't spend my money, my coins. I really wanted to go into a shop and spend my coins and my, my cash, but you know, everything was closed. <clears throat> so, um, I have been keeping some of it, but I've also been spending some of it. So, but not on other things because there was just not. It was not, I could not spend it on just me because of COVID-19. Is that an excuse? Yeah. Probably. Haha, <laughs> I could just keep it, keep it, keep it. I, I needed the cash you, sometimes. Yes, and the challenge wasn't only to put 1% in your jar. No, 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 I'm not finished. Ah, okay, <laughs> then I sorry. have to spend it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm saving some more. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, no, at the end of each month, I have to go and spend it, which is yeah. what I was saying. I actually couldn't spend it because of COVID-19. <laughs> Uh, but soon well, you, you know that I'm gonna annoy you, but that's only an excuse, you know. There yeah, I'm just saying, it's just an excuse, isn't it? <laughs> no, because I mean, I have been. Don't worry, I bought some shorts. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a pair of shorts. Hey, hey. 
so that is a challenge for accumulators. We're not very good at spending money on ourselves or even time. You know, it's, it's a real like, uh, especially if you're a ruler as well. It's a real struggle in 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 a struggle. Like, I need to rest, but I'm not going to. I just need to do this last little thing, this last little thing, and then I don't, and then I don't rest. But I'm better at it. But I, I do go back to the, my bad habits sometimes. Yeah. Well, my romantic is the exact opposite. Yeah. Like, um, I like to spend money and just spend time and money on myself, um, which is, of course, the the issue that um, uh, there's. What I want to explain as well to uh, the the ones listening is that you can be on the like really shining with your archetypes and using all the talents, but you can also live on the shadow side of your archetype. Um, that is that you're living too much in your challenges and really, um, yeah, just um, letting those rule too much. Like mm -hmm. I was a long time um, so much resistant against what I used to have, like having to work hard and a lot and um, that I went to complete opposite and it's just like, oh, now I just want to enjoy and don't do anything and just, oh, see what happens. If I feel like working, I'll work a bit. And then, but that's not healthy either. You need to find the balance. Like you need to find the balance with working less. I need to find the balance that um, working a bit more. And that's since I know the archetypes that is um, working a lot better. And I also know where to find my motivation mm. because uh, I don't want to build an empire. I'm not a ruler, but what I do want is to have um, enough money to, um, to be able to, to enjoy spend. life. Yes, yeah. to enjoy my life. Yeah. And I'm also learning how to enjoy life without spending. And there, COVID-19 was actually really good because, well, we couldn't go out. And my maverick doesn't, um, likes to rebel against um, buying online because it's like the, the ones driving around to deliver all the packages aren't really well paid. And like, it's a bit of the underdog. So I want to protect them and just say, okay, but then I don't buy online. So I had four weeks of hardly any spending because I just wow. refused to um, to order online and um, yeah I just enjoyed the time I just took some time off because I knew that I needed a vacation just enjoy the time with the kids and it was really good to see that oh I can enjoy myself without spending any money yeah so that, that was really one of my that's one of really the tasks for the romantic yeah yeah and um, I um, wanted to say that for my business the challenge for me was to invest in for, so the, one of the, we have sacred money contracts. Each archetype has a sacred money contract and mine is to invest so that I have more freedom. I struggle with that so much, but as soon as I knew that I had that contract in my mind, it really helped me. No, I, it, I managed to push myself like, no, it's for my freedom. I need to invest. I need to have a VA for my freedom. I need to, uh, that's it really. I mean, that, that was the, the biggest struggle for me is like to invest in some help. My ruler wants to do everything herself, and she's very good at it. That's all fine. But then there comes a point where I just can't do everything. <clears throat> Excuse yeah. me. And so the, investing in the VA was really hard. Yeah, and your business was called Feel the Freedom. Yeah. So freedom is really important to you. So I understand that that is a big driver for you yeah. to um, continue to invest to make sure that you have that freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Still so, hard. <laughs> uh, my, my struggle is um, spending a bit less. <laughs> So that's why I loved how we um, matched up in the course that we were able to help each other. Like you're quite the opposite of me uh, in archetypes, but uh, yeah, you really helped me then with uh, more profitability and just, I, I remember at a certain time that I wanted to spend more money, even though I uh, promised you like I wouldn't spend any more money. Um, and I was thinking of buying a new computer. It was already two years old and well four years and uh, there was one button stuck and I had some problems with it and then I thought oh, maybe I should buy a new one and but um, and at the same time I was thinking like oh for the sacred money archetypes I need to hire someone to do the branding of the cars um, so I can send them to my uh, clients um, but the thing was that well that's a lot of money altogether and then I realized that it was my celebrity playing up there that um, and my romantic as well, like, oh, I can have a new computer and it's all good and well, and I don't need to fix all the things that are broken. I can just buy a new one. But uh, my celebrity was like, it's the shiny object syndrome. Like I wanted to spend money on a brand new PC and, uh, but that wasn't really necessary. So I decided not to do that. I'm still working with that one. And I did do a bit of cleanup and it's working a lot better now. But with the branding of the cards, 
that was something I did invest in. So it was a good, you, you were a good trigger to decide, should I spend money on that or not? Just to be really aware of my challenges because both the romantic and the celebrity love to spend money. Um, and yeah, then you don't have to buy anything. You, you don't have to yeah. do everything, you can choose. Yeah. yeah. So then I thought like, oh, but this is really in line with my business. This is who I am and this is how I want to go out. And this is the shining of my celebrity of having such really nice branded uh, cards. And uh, I can use them on social media. And you know, you saw the one from the accumulator. And really it's really good. Magnificent. Love I love the heart as well. I love how you put them together for this, um, for this event as well. Yeah. Picture. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, yeah, that's just how talking with you made me realize the differences between both and that I needed to be aware that one was just one of the challenges that I just wanted to spend money on new shiny objects and the other one was just like, no, this is me, this fits into my business, this is mm. totally aligned and I would not be able to go out as much if I just had created them myself. Yeah, so you always need to remember your money contract and what's more yeah. important. If you can afford both, then of course do both as well. But you can still wait a little bit or you can, yeah, yeah. if there's just one key, you can get by. I'll, I'll wait till I've got like five keys that are broken or something. <laughs> but the thing is that, um, like you say, you can spend it if you have it, but I could also not spend it if I have it, because then that would mean I could spend other, spend on other things, which would be yeah. a lot more value to me, like an extra day yeah. at the sauna, taking an extra day off, and exactly. just because my profit is already there, there's just different things that I could do with this money. Yeah. So even though I earn uh, very much, I will still need to take care of those challenges and be aware that they are there. Yeah, otherwise you won't be able to enjoy your life, which is your contract. You've got to, you've got to yes. enjoy your life, right? Oh, I definitely want to enjoy my life. <laughs> yep, yep. The thing was that um, I, um, I apparently attracted already a lot of accumulators. It was funny because then I asked, when I just, uh, when I got just certified, then I said like, oh, look, you can um, do the quiz. And a lot of people who follow me did uh, the quiz and a lot of accumulators came out on one third or uh, one first, second or third place. Um, and then I did, um, I talked about the sacred money archetypes in uh, the group of uh, the coach that I'm working for as well, Eric Verhagen. Mm -hmm. And um, as I did a workshop there for them as well, and those did the test. And that appeared to be a lot of romantics and alchemists. So it's really fun how you see which archetypes you attract just naturally. And yeah. the thing was, I, um, well, we did the, the exercise together, like which of the archetypes is my ideal client. And it turned out that accumulators were my ideal clients. And I turned so out funny. attracting them so much, even though I thought like, oh, they, I'm sending out the wrong message. They don't, um, I'm not being specific enough, but apparently I was. So it was really funny to see that. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and I think like if I had known you before, it would have been to learn more about how to be a bit more relaxed around money. And I'm, yeah. I'm guessing that's why they're in your group. So, what ideal clients are you? What are your ideal clients? Maybe you want to tell a bit about that. Yeah. So I found out that my ideal clients, or those that I was attracting, and they are my ideal clients, and as it happens, <laughs> uh, are connectors and alchemists, and then nurturing. So connectors, they love connecting with people. And I love connecting with people as well. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised my nurture and my connectors are not higher up in my archetype ranking. However, it is mostly about money and I'm like, I'm not giving my money. <laughs> Nurturers love you know, giving money or, or, um, or treating people, romantics love treating people as well. I remember what you had to do to be able to uh, give Christmas gifts to your family. Really? Yeah, I bad? love it. Was it bad? Compared to no, you, right? no, it was just, well, you're an accumulator, but you realize how important your family is. I know how, how much you, yeah. you love them, but so then you put um, aside some money to be able to pay for those gifts and not feel guilty about them. I, I love that because oh, it I shows, don't even remember. <laughs> it just I do, I do way. yeah, over the year I put like every month I put a set amount yeah. for Christmas, otherwise there might not be enough for them. Yeah. But that's, that's so wonderful because you want to give them presents, you know it's so hard to um, put your money aside for that, but you don't want to feel guilty giving your presents to your family, so that's why you, you protect yourself from that feeling by setting it aside and 
being able to feel generous at the end of the year when yes. they yeah, so being able I, to feel generous that. is important. Yeah, yeah. like and, yeah, and and if I didn't put the money aside, who knows? <laughs> there might not be enough money, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't put anything on my credit card for 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 Christmas presents, which sounds horrible, doesn't it? <laughs> so Esther, very interesting, oh, great, romantic, romantic rebel and alchemist. Oh, yep. the rebel okay. is the maverick. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, what was your question? Oh, yeah. So, who, so connectors. So, yeah, connectors um, love to connect, love to be with people, um, but they're also very good at connecting ideas. And because I help women write, I think that is why I attract mm. a lot of connectors. They're so good at connecting ideas and connecting concepts together. Um, and then alchemists, well, you know, you can come up with 100 ideas an hour, so or a minute, <laughs> and you need that. You need that if you want to be a writer. So, oh, well, it's helpful yes. to have it. You don't need it, but it's helpful. To no, have because it. I think I can also write a book, but it I don't have the alchemist in me. But yeah. it would probably take a little bit longer to find the ideas to write the book. I know. Maybe not, because you'll you'll be because the romantic is so good at shortcuts. You'll be yeah. like, well, this is what I'm writing, and that's that, and it will be done in a week. The Ooh, alchemist will be like, okay. well, maybe I could write about this. So maybe I could write about that and see yeah, the that's true. <laughs> I, I love that that uh, the romantic finds the shortcuts. Yes. Um, so uh, Esther, really good one, finding the shortcuts. Yes, yes. Good <laughs> and we love that because indeed I um, I noticed that whenever I need to hear something, it just comes to me in some way. And you said the alchemist in you has the same. Yeah. Like we don't need to follow all the specific steps in a course. Sometimes it's okay if we just pick here and there something out of it and it will be just what we need. And we don't need to stress that we are not listening to 100,000 podcasts or YouTube movies or doing lots of courses. It will come to us. We just need yes. to be really, yeah, follow Even our intuition. I will do a lot more than you necessarily. <laughs> I will. Have you listened to this? Have you listened to that? Have you done that? Oh, Have you yes. listened to Kendall? Have you... <laughs> not yet. Well, it, Hang on. It, it was good because it motivated me sometimes to go listen to something that I needed to hear. But yes. a lot of what you send is just like, nah, nah, don't need to hear it. And I'm glad you suggest because then I can think out yes, of the most important like, thing. Yeah. Whereas I'll be like, oh, I need everything. I need to listen yeah, to everything. No, I, I can't do it because... I remember that at a certain time I was trying to keep up with you, just like how much you did in a day. And after two days, I needed three days of rest. <laughs> probably, I, I probably did as well. Like, yeah. So, no. because I thought like, oh, I was um, sometimes jealous about other archetypes uh, or not really jealous, but just sometimes wishing that I had them too, like the accumulator, be a bit more profitable or the ruler, a bit more energy to, uh, to work, um, to clean up my to-do list and, or to do something myself, but I always want to hire it out and just let other people do it because I think that, oh, that's so much yeah, easier. I was jealous of, the, of that as well. Like, oh, I want to be more yeah. romantic. But the, the beauty <laughs> of it is as you get to know all the archetypes and you will, that be just being in the group and in Celine's energy, then you will be able to bring forward what you need. And yeah. it won't be as much as if it was your number one archetype, obviously. I'll never be a romantic. You'll never be an accumulator. But we can bring those forward to help us go like, okay, it's time to rest. And that's what I do. So, bye, Esther. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for popping in. Mm -hmm. um, no, indeed. It's just uh, finding the balance. And no archetype is wrong. All archetypes are good. All archetypes can earn money the way they want to and uh, can be very successful. So there's no reason. I noticed that I did... Um, feel a bit um, annoyed in the beginning, like, oh, I'm not a ruler or an accumulator or even connector because I know lots of connectors and they seem to be so good on Facebook and gathering so many people around them. And I was struggling because I was suppressing my celebrity and my in coming out. Mm -hmm. But it, it seemed like a, such a better combination for um, building a business, but it's not. It's just all, all that matters is that you go into your... Um, into your talents and your gifts and just really let them come out and be you doesn't matter if you think that somebody else is a better archetype or does it in a different way than you think this is the right way no you need to find your own way and in your own way you will attract the people that need to hear you yeah so it's, it's okay and then, you can only be you <laughs> it's the only way yeah. and um I'm trying to put my screen right oh, i can't see the the remarks oh, anymore. Ah, okay. Uh, there it is. Comments, no. um, 
And um, I think when um, I remember in the group, somebody asked like, uh, what did you learn most out of sacred money archetypes? And nine out of the 10 responses were that self-acceptance, that it's okay to be you and see where you're good at and see where other people aren't. Um, that it's okay that like, uh, and especially also in pricing, I notice a big difference that um, people often think like, oh, but my clients won't be able to pay that. But then I think like, well, that depends who your client is. If you have an accumulator as a client, well, then you need to be careful. You need to be really specific about what the value is. But if you have a romantic or a celebrity, you just need to make sure that it's really VIP thing and really like the, they won't read your lead page. They will just pick up a feeling. And if that feeling is good, they will say yes. Yeah. So it's a whole different type of marketing. And also, um, yeah, that's a block that really a lot of people have that people won't be able to pay my prices. But all archetypes will be able to pay your prices if you, um, if you are yourself and are very clear in what you are offering. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. And if you know what they're like. Yeah. For example, <laughs> I do not attract connectors. Um, and I don't think I, well, I did have a client, a connector, but, um, I noticed that, um, not with this client, but just in general with connectors, what I know about the sacred money archetypes is that, um, they, they want to be, uh, I, I don't know them very well, but because, this, because it's so low, it's my absolute lowest. <laughs> and it's just, it means for me that it's not good for me to set up a group where I have to interact a lot. Um, uh, long-term engagements aren't for me either. It's just, I want to have a short impact and then put, um, put my clients on the road that they have the tools to continue on and they can ask me questions, but it can be a long coaching program and not with a Facebook group where I'm always present, always uh, mm -hmm. giving each other comments and connecting people. The, yeah, not. Whereas I'm the opposite. I'm like yeah. long, deep conversations, yeah. relationships, and I'm not a connector, but I, there must be a lot of connector in my personality rather than in my um, money personality. Yeah. What I had to see is that I do like deep connections and I have really good friendships as well, but it's, um, it's often, uh, it's often asked a lot of energy to entertain, to, to maintain those deep relationships. Like mm -hmm. I noticed that it often comes from the other person and that's not because I don't want to see them or I don't want to have that connection, but it's just not priority on my, you need to on my list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just assume that people will come to me. <laughs> yeah, they will. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and but I know that with friends, I need to be careful about that, be very mindful that, well, I can't neglect them, so then I do with effort, but that's really like, it takes but an effort. To, go it, it to the spa natural. with them. You yes, go to the I spa do. spa with them, yeah. <laughs> yep. So it's just something that I'm aware of, and that's fine, but it helps me shape my business that I don't, um, I don't want to say anymore that, oh, I'll give you, you can um, do a whole year on your course and I will guide you through every mm. step of the way. I'm more like, um, I think a connector might hold um, their client's hands a bit more. Like I'm more like, okay, this is, these are the tools. You can ask me questions if you have them and I will help you through them, but I won't hold your hand the whole time. Yeah. You will just yeah. get the tools and then yeah go on your own yeah so yeah mm. i don't see there are any more questions no. um is there anything else you would like to say no. i think that's it really we've covered pretty much everything yeah. <laughs> the accumulator uh, um, and the alchemist um, yeah and the ruler yeah. so yeah and um it's just um it's just been super useful um one to do sma the course to to meet you and yep. and it's so funny that we connected we're completely opposite um and three so useful to have this conversation because it's it's like you know it's like a summary of what we've been going through for the last yep. eight months nine months so yep definitely amazing so thank you for yeah. having me oh i I look forward to having you on my page oh, in a few weeks time. It, it wasn't a coincidence that we uh, hooked up together because no. um, when I uh, started SMA, I did, uh, well, there was a request of um, just ask for a buddy in the Facebook group so you can work together because that was needed for the certification, just meet up with somebody very regularly. And I put in my request, like, I'm looking for a buddy, 
who is uh, a ruler because I know that as a romantic and it's just like courses I don't often do them completely but to get certified you need to do you needed to do them completely and yeah. I wanted to be in the energy of somebody who had the drive and really to go forward so I'm not sure I replied to that though I think I can I think I oh I can't remember now we'd have to go back yeah but um, yeah. yeah definitely yeah. that's yeah but <laughs> I also connected to another ruler because um I had several buddies in the beginning or just several conversations with other people yeah and there was one who was um on the first place a ruler but we didn't um manage to uh continue the buddyship because um there was always coming something in her way like oh but i'm busy doing this and i'm busy uh, doing that and like it was really the the ruler driving her and she was doing so many courses at the same time and i noticed very quickly that that wasn't a priority at that moment in the meantime she is certified and she's found her drive to finish the course but the thing was with you was no, that i was like matter. i'm doing this We're in like one this. a week boom, 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 boom. are you ready <laughs> yes i'm ready yeah and we did it yeah. <laughs> yeah but we did it really quickly so i'm really happy so yeah, it was really good. yeah no coincidence that we matched up i'm really happy yeah. okay and then um i think we'll leave it at that but um, looking forward to doing the interview on your page at some point.